Hi, and thanks for watching another video. This one is all about breathing. And today we've got a very special guest. We've got Susie Perry, who is in fact a, a breathing specialist. In fact, um, Susie, tell me exactly what is your title? I'm a breathwork facilitator. Right, a breathwork facilitator. Well, I'm an Alexander Technique practitioner, and as many of you know, uh, breathing is really important uh, when it comes to Alexander Technique. In fact, FM Alexander used to be uh, known as the breathing guy. But <clears throat> nowadays, people are really going for breathing and they're going for proper breathing classes. So, so now we've got a specialist breathing expert here today, uh, Susie, and uh, she's going to tell us all about breathing. So, uh, Susie, tell us, how did you actually get into breathing? As a, as a specialist subject? So Nick, I actually got into breathing because I had an accident where I sustained a traumatic brain injury. Mm. And I was nine months in bed. And during that first nine months, like all of my senses got taken away from me. So my vision, I couldn't open the curtains because I was in nonstop migraines. My hearing, I had nonstop tinnitus. Every single sense was taken away and I was in bed in a dark room for nine months. Mm -hmm. And literally the only thing I could do was breathe. So wow. actually a few months before my accident, I had just discovered breath work at the Bali Spirit Festival. At the which festival? And at the Bali Spirit Festival. Oh, right. okay. So a few months before my accident, I discovered breath work. So when I was then put in this situation where that was my only resource. I was like, you know what? I'm here. If this is the one thing I can do, let's do this. So then I just started doing breath work every single day whilst wow. I was in bed and recovering from my traumatic brain injury. And it just helped me so okay. much. Okay. And were you doing that with somebody online or, or how were so, you, yeah, how I doing started that? Doing... you had a facilitator? Yeah, I started doing that just on my own and then when I was in Bali and discovered breathwork, I became addicted to it and went to like a class every single day. Right. And I signed up okay. to all the newsletters of the people mm. who I've been to classes with. And whilst I was in, my, in the depths of my brain injury, I got an email from my, one of my favorite teachers who I'd met over there saying that they were doing a 10 month teacher training. And so I did, I, I was like, right, it was on Zoom. I couldn't yeah. have people come to visit me because like have, holding conversations was just too much. But what I could do was open up a Zoom room every fortnight. And I just wow. thought, I actually didn't do it because I wanted to become a teacher. I actually just did it because I was like, I really want to be in something for 10 mm -hmm. months whilst mm -hmm. I'm going through this. Yeah. Where, because usually breathwork classes, you know, are just like the one off here and there that you mm. find. Whereas I was like, okay, I want to be immersed in this for 10 months because it's really helping me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's why I did it. Mm. I didn't actually mean to become a teacher. But <laughs> well, that's same what here. Happened. <laughs> yeah. I think that happens to a lot of us on our road, doesn't it? That we suddenly get, go, this is great. I'm going to do this. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's that's one of those things, isn't it? Now, tell me. Well, though, you realize uh, how much it helped you. I mean, I think a lot of people won't actually know what the hell we're talking about when we say mm. oh, breathing 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 I mean <clears throat> to the average person on the street they think well you know we all breathe don't we um you know but but what is it exactly that when you sort of talk to a practitioner you know why is breathing so fashionable now and, and what is it we actually do in a class what do we actually mm. do mm. Yeah, and that's interesting because that's why I don't, I don't, I call myself a breathwork facilitator rather than yeah. a breathwork teacher because we right. all know how to breathe. So of course yeah. it's like, you know, you do what, Susie? You teach people how to breathe? Are you yeah, kidding yeah. me? <laughs> um, but yeah, but the thing is, every single emotion that we have in our body yeah. affects our breathing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like when you're stressed or anxious, you will notice that you're taking shallower breaths. Yeah. Um, you know, and when you're at ease and joy, you'll notice that you are breathing deeper. Yeah. And now this works both ways, obviously. So then if you can manipulate your breathing, when you are suddenly feeling anxious or stressed, if you can manipulate your breathing, you can then manipulate your emotions. Right. You can change your emotions. Now, Susie, I'm just going to stop you there because... For Alexander Technique practitioners, manipulate is a dirty word. I'll tell you that okay. now. 
And I'll just simply <laughs> explain, <laughs> right, we'll go in to talk about that because that's really interesting. And the reason that we say that is a dirty word is, is, is mm. simply because manipulate means to sort of, it's like a little Machiavellian character, isn't it, coming in to yeah. seduce the sort of beautiful blonde, you know, what, what you know, but we, in Alexander technique, what we're trying to do is we're trying to approach breathing from a sort of musculoskeletal point of view. So yeah. we're trying to soften the muscle and get people to just stop. So we say, get out of the way of breathing. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're saying is really interesting and it's a very different approach. Would you, in, if you had more time, have not used the word manipulate or is that a good word for you? I would say regulate. Okay. Yeah, so maybe manipulate isn't a word you'd sort of use. Manipulate the... probably isn't the word, the, the okay. right word. Yeah, it's more like if you can start on a on a moment to moment basis, like noticing how you're breathing, and if you yeah. are taking, okay, if right. you know, if like, so bring that and bring your attention to it, bring your awareness right. to it, right? Yeah, and then, Good. okay, you know, you can start to play with that mm. by doing certain breath patterns to right. work with your nervous system and your emotional yeah. state. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're trying to, in Alexander, I think, I think very much sort of neutralize our own interference with the breath. But what, mm. what I think is interesting about what I've heard other people talking about in breathing circumstances or, you know, breathing, talking about breathing generally, I think that, um, uh, you know, it is interesting to have some, kind of control over breathing particularly if you're sort of talking about you know dealing with emotions i mean can you say a bit more about that because i don't think it, uh, you know our particular approach in that exam technique is very much about stopping people getting them to settle down and allow muscle to relax and so on but i don't think there's anything wrong if you can actually say look you're going to do this with your breathing you know hmm. what, what, let's uh, let's look at that a bit yeah well no to be honest nick actually and that isn't um, this isn't the breath work that I facilitate either too much, but mm. um, a knock-on effect from the breath work that I facilitate is that you can start to notice your breathing more as you go about your day-to-day -day and mm. then come mm. work with it. But actually the breath work that I facilitate is um, founded by Stanislav Grof, who is a transpersonal, founder of the transpersonal psychology oh. and a scientist. Yeah, sorry? Stan Groff, he was a Czech scientist. Oh, right, okay. Hmm. And um, so he got sent over to America and the, the American government asked him to take notes in a laboratory on people taking LSD in the 60s. Oh, so wow, right. He did over okay. 4,500 studies of people on LSD. And what he realized when people were taking LSD was that their breathing pattern changed. So when LSD got banned, he actually said, you know what, you can reach alternate states of consciousness through your breath. Yeah. So that's actually the process that I take people on. And just like the Alexander technique, it is actually all about letting go of control. So right. we do it, we do it in a lying down position, mm. you know, yeah. relaxed, open mouthed. Mm but still remaining conscious. So we put it to loud evocative music and I guide. So you're still remaining conscious, but being fully relaxed and getting out of your way. Exactly right. like the Alexander technique, you're letting go of control and getting out of your own way. Mm. But do you say something like, you know, do this kind of breathing or like, for example, I've been where, like say for example, in a Pilates class, I didn't particularly like it, but in a Pilates mm. class, I was asked to sort of take a deep breath and, uh, and let the breath out this way and put it in the mouth and take it out through the nose. I mean, do you do anything like that? I mean, where you're sort of the saying best... this kind of breathing, like a <gasps> big breath or a <sighs> throw it out like that. Or, is there any of that? Or... The breath pattern that I share is we do the same breath throughout the whole, <clears throat> I take people on a journey, a 45 minute journey from start wow. to finish. Mm. And it's the same breath pattern throughout. Mm. And during the first half of the journey, I'm really building the music up and we are trying to build the energy up in the body. So mm -hmm. I will be giving cues of, you know, let's bring this in deeper. Let's, no. let's really work with this. Let's mm. take it, like, you know, start deepening your breaths all the way to your belly. Wow. Like just to work that energy up. Mm -hmm. And then I find during the second half of the journey, actually, when we I like, so we build up the energy and then mm. there's a peak 
and then we allow ourselves to go into this deep state and that's where you really get into your theta state and then I find what happens there is that like your body starts to breathe you so you're not even really there mm. your whole body is breathing you wow hence the connection to LSD I guess <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> But what I mean, that, let's talk a bit more about that because that's very interesting. I mean, obviously, he mm. researching all these LSD, these uh, what people that were on LSD or the, were they? What what were they sort of? How was that working? Yeah. I mean, because obviously, when you people go to LSD, I imagine, obviously, when we take LSD, it is the brain is breaking down. It's effectively dying. the The brain is is really, it's the process of the brain shutting down and that's what gives people mm. the hallucinatory experience so what, mm. what um about that uh, uh you know because obviously then you imagine people would be shallow breathing or, or what, what's the mm. well he doesn't actually see it that way he actually sees it as activating different parts of the brain right um so in breath work when we play with when we do the conscious connected breathing through the mouth we are actually taking in more oxygen yes. because it's, it's open mouth breathing. We're not breathing through the nose at all. Mm -hmm. And we're mm -hmm. keeping the breaths connected. So when you don't have that pause at the top or the bottom, then you are actually building up the oxygen in your bloodstream. Yeah, right. So the, yeah. the science behind that is that this actually activates different neural pathways right. and it allows right. us to quieten down the frontal part of our brain, mm. which is the part of our monkey mind, our, yeah. you know, that perpetual thought loops. Right. Yes. So then yeah. with this increased oxygen, you end up getting different parts of your brain activated. And that's where we can go into a deep subconscious state and work with the subconscious. And that is where, you know, you may experience alternate states of reality. Mm, that's fascinating. It's amazing. It's with it's with the playing of the oxygen and carbon dioxide that the yeah. you know that you are able to reach different states. Yeah, right. I think that's really interesting. I I tell you a little story. And when I was training, uh, I trained with Wolf Carrington and Dillis Carrington. And Dillis was a, was a relatively austere figure to most people, although she did have a great sense of humour. Um, but you know, when she was teaching, it was a very serious matter. And, you know, you didn't muck about, you didn't laugh or suddenly start talking. It was a very disciplined class. But mm. uh, so I remember I went down to do, you know, the semi-supine that we do lying on the table. And mm -hmm. I was just sort of lying there. And of course, Dillis would come around, have a little look, see what's going on. And she'd start working her hands into you, you know. And she, as I say, she was quite a serious person. You wouldn't just sort of start laughing or making a joke. But, I, but every time she did this, I suddenly opened up. It was like opening up a big sort of, you know, I don't know what, you know, it was, it, I just suddenly opened up and, and I just would always laugh hysterically. And she would carry on working. And I'd say, Dillis, every time you do this, what, I just giggle, I laugh. And she, she said, why is that? And she was saying, well, it's because of the uh, extra oxygen that you're getting in your body. You're suddenly getting a bit of a, a boost because we don't breathe enough. And mm. you know, it's an interesting one. I mean, do you find that one of the benefits that people are getting out of coming to see you and do the breathing is for once they're actually getting some oxygen? Because I certainly yeah. find that myself in my class. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they we are not getting as much oxygen, oxygen as we should be getting nowadays, but with pollution and, our, mm. the, and also the fact that we are sat at a desk all day, often our lungs are closed, we're not mm. breathing properly. So, yeah. you know, you are getting that flood of oxygen when you mm. breathe properly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's a big part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, obviously, you know, when I trained as an Alexander Technique uh, practitioner, you know, it was a really big transformation. You know, you like start here and you can, you know, you go through all this stuff. So for me, what is really interesting, and uh, perhaps when I was an actor, it was a much, very much about the transformation of, of, of yourself into another character. I'm quite interested mm -hmm. in this whole idea of transformation of personal growth. That um, You've been on a journey with the breathing. I mean, is that a big thing for you? The whole business of, you know, taking somebody on a journey and, and watching that transformation, perhaps somebody might come and they've been depressed or their energies have been low or they've got some blocks around certain issues or something like that. I mean, have you come across that sort of thing? Are you dealing with that sort of thing? What, what oh, does yeah. transformation mean in your work? 
you deal with that, you know, people can have massive shifts even just after one session. Because when we tap into our body in this way, and you know this too, and the Alexander technique, when we have trauma in our lives, we like not only hold it in our mind, but we also hold it in our body. So you can go to talk therapy and talk till the cows come home about an event or an experience that has happened to you. But often we are holding things in our body. So when we do the breath work like this and tap into the nervous system, we are releasing things. So I really have not had one client who's walked away from one session without a shift in something. And it's a sort of shift at the level of the sort of consciousness somehow. Yeah, like Mm. they just feel lighter. Yeah, You know, they, yeah, you could, there's diff- people have different experiences. And what I really like about it is that the body will give you what you need that day. Like, <laughs> I remember the second breath work I ever did, I had an orgasm. Oh, really? <laughs> In front of 600 people at the Bali Spirit Festival. Wow. And obviously I had no idea that this was gonna, this could happen, you know? And I was like lying there going, what the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then obviously the next day well, I go to another breath That was simply through the breathing process. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just me lying on a mat breathing. Yeah. And so the next day I go into a breath work and I'm like, you know, ready for the <laughs> Bring next. it on. <laughs> yeah, and it was something to hold. It was like a really angelic experience. So Very you, different. You, yeah. you never know what your body is going to give you that day, but you can mm. always trust your body will give you what you need. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I think a lot of people um, go to lots of different classes where they they sort of discover that they have a certain experience, you know, and that experience is what sort of turns them on to that particular school of thought. And I think that if you don't get that sense of lightness or you don't get that sense of transformation, then it's probably not that great an experience. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I mean, because obviously I think that, um, you know, that's what certainly got me into the Alexander technique, the fact that it was such a big uh, change you know I, I mean I, I used to sort of turn up very stressed out couldn't park anywhere really wound up by life the universe and everything else you know, just, and, and just really hyper and then you'd just leave and, and you'd be oh um I can't ever imagine you like that Nick I <laughs> <laughs> no but I've only ever known you as an Alexander teacher no I was uh, yeah no really I mean you know I mean I think I think that's the interesting thing isn't it that we all are potentially sort of wound up hyper even if we do uh, practice these things you know it, it is the continued practice that keeps us in the right place isn't it uh, certainly for me I mean I think I'm still quite hyper I'm still quite crazy you know and and, and of course I um you know, practice Alexander technique all the time, every day, you know, so it keeps me really in a good place, you know, and of course, Mm. I, you know, I can often find myself wandering away from that place, you know, Um, and I think that's, I think that's something that people don't realise a lot, isn't it, that in fact, you know, you shouldn't be expected to just wake up and be great in the morning, you shouldn't ever expect that you're just going to wake up and be really centred and focused and in a great place, you know, as human beings, we do have to make an effort to achieve that and clearly that's what's coming across about your work is that you know you're facilitating people to actually realize no Mm. you can't just get up every day and expect everything to be fine you know it does take some work it does take technique what do you think Mm. about that yeah I think you're absolutely right and that's why I really love breathwork because I find that for example in comparison to meditation I get there much quicker like Mm. Right. A much, much, much quicker. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I find it's like the most transformational in the quickest amount of time because mm-hmm. you have the music, you're being guided, you're not just sat there, you know, like, and, yeah. and because you have the mm-hmm. anchoring of the breath into your body immediately, mm-hmm. then the transformations have, uh, happen quicker. And the, what I love about the breath work the most is the psychological changes that it can have on your subconscious, mm. which then have a knock-on effect day to day. So eventually you are actually waking up feeling great every day. Right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And on your purpose. Yeah. And yes, yes, yeah. Start shifting all the negative behavioral yeah. beliefs that, you know, that were programmed into us in our first one, like Joe Dispenza says we run um, we're ninety five percent run by the subconscious, which is like programmed usually within the first seven years of our life. Yeah. And so, you know, so if we can start shifting those those 
patterns like take away the fear take away the Mm -hmm. self-doubt the low self-worth then we have space to bring in the love the acceptance the confidence yeah yeah I think it's interesting because I mean of course we briefly mentioned back then uh, just a little earlier about the whole business of people going to to the talky therapies and and of Mm. course a lot of people report that the talky therapies are very stressful you know Mm. rushing up trauma in a way that is you know can be unhelpful and uh the journey that we're clearly on with this breathing and with the Alexander technique and these things is, is actually not to drudge up that stuff, but to bring you very much into the moment that you're in and to deal with these things physiologically. Now in yeah. your sort of training, I mean, are you aware of that, that sort of difference between, you know, we are approaching the problems in a physiological sense, dealing with the symptoms of stress and anxiety, which are usually physiological and finding that as we work on those problems in a physiological way, we're yeah. then shifting the mental, uh, the emotional. And that's quite an interesting thing in itself, isn't it? Yeah, exactly the same. Exactly yeah. the same, we're working on them physiologically. And so often people will come to a breath work and they will have, you know, they will cry mm. and they will have big releases and they don't really know like what it's from. Sometimes people might have insights of like, oh, this was, you know, from when my mother did this to me at this age, Mm. or sometimes the tears will come and they just don't really know what it's from. But what they do know afterwards is that they feel lighter. And something's new. It's interesting, this this idea of feeling lighter. Mm. Um, You know, I've had sort of people, for example, um, who obviously they feel that lightness and because obviously you work on the muscles and you're getting them to relax and breathe and so on. But then actually when they start to practice on their own they might have panic attacks Mm. you know have you ever experienced anything like that where people have started the work and obviously it's all great while they've got you there and you're supporting them Mm. so they go away and oh you know it's not quite oh I don't know what you know this is you know how do you do you experience that at all for that sort of feedback yeah of course and I think it's always nice to have someone supporting you on your journey Mm. along the way whether you know whether it's a breath worker or an Alexander technique or yeah, yeah. just someone, yeah. someone when we're not here to go through this life on our own and deal no. with it. <laughs> <on our own. laughs> but I mean, how many sort of sessions would people come to see you? Mm. How many times would they, how, how often would they need to come? I mean, is there a sort of course that, that they do? Yeah, I, I have a six uh, six session course because I find that in six sessions you can actually start seeing some really tangible results. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can. Th- yeah. yeah, you can come for one off sessions, and yeah. you will have an experience mm-hmm. for sure. But then yeah. also, like, you know, it, it's nicer to be held in like a program so that you yeah. know when things come up, we can then work through them. Yeah, right. Right. And then will people be able to come back if they feel they want to? And and this is a nice experience and they might feel they want a bit longer to do it and so on. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I just did a five month mentorship with a lady over in L.A. Did you? I Yeah. Was that once a week? Every fortnight. Oh, fortnight. Just for my just for my yeah. own extra training, I wanted to do some more training. So, mm-hmm. and I personally mm-hmm. like I will not go through life without my own breath work for, without being held by by another breath worker. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm the same. I go and have Alexander lessons myself. Uh, I have, ah. uh, just before Christmas. <laughs> it's always amazing, you know, to go back and be yeah. the the student again. You know, it's uh, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so. Um, uh, so I'm just I'm thinking, is there any other? Um, oh, yes. The one question I was going to ask you now, obviously, hmm. considering where we're at in the world is obviously we're all teaching online now. And I'm finding that's working really well. People come back every that's week. They have, it, they have to have their you know, mm-hmm. session, even online. I mean, are you facilitating that at the moment? Yes, I've just started online. Yeah. And how are you yeah. finding that? Uh, uh, technology is not my forte, but I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are... But, but the thing is, for the for the client, actually, they get exactly the same experience. I did all of my training online, even back in 2017 when I started. Oh, right. Yeah, everything was online. 
Yes. Obviously, I've done big, um, I have gone to retreats and done breathwork retreats and things, but actually, you do get as good at an, as an experience when you're at home because I find you get to really relax because you're in your own environment, you can make it cozy, yeah. you can make it safe, it mm -hmm. feels mm -hmm. safe for you. Wow, wow, that's amazing. Um, so, um, so, 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 uh, then in that case, uh, obviously, we we're going to have to give the information out as to how people can contact you. And I think what what what, what this will be is it'll be a YouTube video, and all the mm. information about that will be down in the comments section, you know, or in the information section, which is just sort of along aligned with the comment section. And so um, we'll put all the details there. Do you, do you have a website? I've got an Instagram page. Oh, so we can put your Instagram details and, and you're contactable through that, are you? Yes. Yeah, good. OK, well, we can put all that information there. And um, well, I mean, I think um, that has been absolutely fantastic. It's so been a very interesting chat. Um, and I think that people are going to be really interested to find out much more and they'll be able to email you or as they get in touch with you through that uh, Instagram uh uh, thingy and uh, of course if people are interested in uh, pursuing um the alexander technique that's great too uh, my information will be there and um i think uh, we we we've i mean is there anything else you wanted to say to it to people before it's just been a great chat thanks nick yeah it's been really good and i think people are going to really get a lot out of this um so hence to say do leave comments do like the video do subscribe and there will be more <laughs>